This is the Bentley Mulliner Bacala, one of the most exclusive vehicles on the planet. It was built by Bentley's Mulliner division, who specialize in creating hyper-exclusive, hyper-expensive cars for people with discerning tastes. They'll only ever build 12 of these, and each one will cost 1.5 million pounds plus taxes. It's very impressive. What I wanna know is, can a car costing this much cash ever be worth the money? The Bacala harks back to a day when car makers used to build a chassis and customers would visit a coach builder to build the bodies on top. As a result, it uses the same platform as the Continental GT convertible, with Bentley's Mulliner department providing the stylish bits over the top, and there are plenty of those. The Bacala is not just a Continental GT with a body kit. The entire body is bespoke to this vehicle. In fact, the only parts carried over from the Continental are the door handles because apparently Bentley needed those because they contain all the electronics for the keyless entry system. The rest of it is Bacala all day long and the front is very unique. It's actually inspired by the Bentley EXP100 concept car that we saw a couple of years ago. So it's a lot sharper and a lot more modern looking than the current generation of Continental GT. This grille is also quite fascinating, not just because of the very intricate patterning you see going across the full length of the front, but also because of this leading edge, which sticks out further than pretty much anything else on the car, which means that's the first thing that's gonna make impact with something if you come a cropper. By the way, that can be customized to be pretty much any finish you like and also match the Bentley Wings badge. Another cool detail is they've swapped out the headlights on the Continental from being quad lights to being twin lights, again, inspired by the EXP100. And I love this little detail on the side, the day running lights, which bleed into the side of the car and almost look like, I guess like a frying pan if I was being a little bit unkind. Then you've got extra venting in the bonnet to help extract hot air from that big twin turbo W12. And I love this detail here as well. These fake latches, they don't serve any purpose, but they do kind of hint at Bentley's DNA in the world of motorsport. Around the side, I love the look of the Bacalar in profile. It's so sleek. Let's start with these wheels though. 22 inches, completely bespoke to the Bacalar, and they can be customized in a number of different ways, particularly in terms of the finish. You can have this gray finish or a chrome effect, and each one can have these body colored inserts. In this case, we've got scarab green on the wheels, which matches the scarab green on the paintwork. One point I don't appreciate on the Bacala is that even though it's a 1.5 million pound car, plus that, it doesn't come with carbon ceramic brakes. These are steel brakes. You've got to pay extra to get carbon. But there is one really cool element that kind of goes some way to making up for it, and that is this beautiful, almost weapon-looking design just around the Bentley B. Just behind that, you've got this vertically oriented vent, which matches the detail on the front vents, and also this black and green door mirror, which just looks really cool in that contrasting color. Here's one bit I'm not massively fond of, and that is these windows. When you wind them up, what you notice is that they don't quite line up with the back of the car. And also, there's this awkward little gap between the window and this space just behind it. So it doesn't quite look right in my eyes. I'm tempted to just drive around with the windows wound down where the car looks better, but that obviously has implications in terms of your refinement levels on the inside. The coolest bit about the Bacala though has to be the rear end, it's sensational. Remember, this car isn't convertible. There's no roof whatsoever, which has meant that Mulliner could do whatever the hell they wanted in terms of the design. And that's given them the inspiration to create this double bubble effect made of carbon fiber. And it is wild. It looks nothing like any other Bentley on the market. And look at the muscularity in this rear haunch as well. This really thick shoulder line is just sensational to look at. And then, Another little detail that I find really fascinating is this quite angular fuel filler cap. So you open that, the ones on the Continental are more rounded, this is more sharp, and then you've got this lovely Bacala fuel filler cap just inside. It's almost like a jewel, a little work of art that I don't think anyone will actually ever even see, even the people that own these cars. Because let's face it, they're not gonna go to the petrol station, are they? At the back, you could argue that the front end is a little too reminiscent of the Continental, but the back for me is completely distinctive. I love the way that this upper section folds back in on itself, as does this area here, meeting in the middle where the Bentley B badge almost appears to float in the center. 
Speaking of floating, these rear lights also do a good job of seeming to float just in place. I'm not a great fan of this gloss black section in the middle, but it does at least tie in with the gloss black diffuser section. And the exhaust for me is actually really nice. I love the shape of it for one, but also I also adore this interior section just here, which you can actually customize to a finish of your choice. Now, boot space. You might look at this upper section and think it's a deployable spoiler, but it's not. It's actually a boot which you can open using the key. It's pretty large. The only problem is the opening is absolutely tiny. So even though it can fit a suitcase or a week's shopping, the only way you're gonna get shopping in there is if you chuck it all in or blend it first. Useless. There is, however, some additional storage behind the seats, which can be used to carry bespoke luggage should you be tempted to go on a road trip. The rest of the interior is also very special, with exquisite materials not seen on many cars. The wood on the door panels and dashboard is a 5,000-year-old river wood sourced from the ancient Fenlands of East Anglia. Bentley has used tweed on the center console, dashboard, and on the seats, and there's abundant use of leather, not least on the door poles, with more intricate patterning on the speaker grills. The infotainment system is exactly the same as you get in a Continental GT, which means by default, it looks as if there isn't even a screen. It's just this beautiful 5,000 year old river wood. But if you press the screen button, it actually rotates to give you your main infotainment display, which has all your sat nav and your settings for your car, etc. If you press it one more time, it rotates once more to give you a set of gauges, which show your outside air temperature, a compass, and also a timer. The highlight of the Bacalar for me though is definitely these seats, which look absolutely tremendous. Again, it's got the tweed in the center. It's got these beautiful headrests and the triangular stitching, which actually matches the triangles in this carpet. Talk about attention to detail. Right, should we go drive it? That's about 50 grand, by the way. So it's a million and a half pound car plus taxes. Does that give you a million and a half pound driving experience? Well, I'll tell you what, it drives like a Bentley, that's for sure. And that's because it uses the same three chamber air suspension that you get in the Continental GT. It's incredibly plush, regardless of the road surface. There are actually four different driving modes. There's Sport, which is the most aggressive. There's Bentley, which is a Goldilocks setting in the middle. There's Comfort, which is the most comfortable, obviously. And then there's Custom, which lets you choose how the car's individual systems, steering, suspension, accelerator, react at any given time. But I'll tell you what, it doesn't matter what mode you're in because it always feels glorious to drive. Such a good car in that respect. Refinement is a little bit mixed in the Bacalar. At low speeds, it's absolutely fine. Most of the wing gets deflected over this windscreen, no problem whatsoever. But when you start to push on, say above 50, 60 miles an hour, you do hear quite a lot of wind noise and quite a lot of road noise in addition to that. These windows are acoustic glass, so they're semi-double glazed, but you can't expect them to work miracles because there's no roof, which means at some point you're gonna get wind noise in this car. In fact, I'd go as far as to say that the standard Continental GT convertible is more refined than the Bacalar. The other thing to worry about is that because there's no roof, you always have to keep an eye on the weather. Obviously, this car is not designed for use in the country it was built in because Great Britain, let's face it, has a tendency to rain quite a lot. But if you're lucky enough to buy this car and you live somewhere like the south of France, well, let's just say you're probably not going to worry about that side of things too much. The Bacalar uses that traditional Bentley 6 litre W12, the Bentley Big Dog, and it's pushing out a lot of power, 659 PS and 900 newton meters of torque. It's got plenty of grunt, this thing, but I'll tell you what you notice in the Bacalar is the sound. Because it's got no roof, you hear so much more from the exhaust. There's pops and cracks, not in a predictable way. You kind of have to earn those noises but also you get whooshes from the turbo. It all sounds really, really nice. Where it sounds best though, is when you're revving at a standstill. So let me pull in, give you a little blast to that, shall I? Right, knock it into neutral, sport mode. Oh, you hear that? Naughty pops. 
from the exhaust and that whoosh from the turbos. It sounds mega. Right, while I'm here, we might as well do a launch. Um, they reckon it'll do zero to 62 in 3.8 seconds. I've got my timing gear set up. Launch control. Love that noise. Send it. Oh! <laughs> that feels properly strong. What's the damage? Zero to 62 in 3.4 seconds. But actually, I've done quicker times in the Continental GT Speed. I've done around sort of 3.2, 3.3s, plus that car will do 208 miles an hour. And this will only do about 202. So you're not actually getting any extra speed for your extra cash. Still quick though. The handling is slightly different to a Continental GT actually. I wasn't expecting that, but it feels much more racy, much more agile, much more dynamic. The steering is a lot quicker than in the standard car. And part of that is down to the fact that this uses all wheel steering. So the rear wheels turn the opposite direction to the front. I'm not sure if the steering ratio is any different, but it certainly feels that way. The front end of the car feels much more agile, much more darty, and much more willing to hug your apexes. The Bacala also has a significantly stiffened up rear end. It's also got a 20 millimeter wider track, and it has a 30 kilogram reduction in weight, all of which combines to make this a more sporty proposition than I'd perhaps expected. There is one pretty big downside. I mentioned it earlier, and that is the fact that the Bacala doesn't come with carbon ceramic brakes as standard. They're steels, and actually they're okay. And maybe it's the right decision because you're probably not gonna be pushing the Bacala at any great speed. It's one of those cars you're gonna buy it and park it up in your private collection and never ever use it, so are carbons necessary? Having said that though, if you're one of those people who do wanna enjoy your car, the addition of carbon brakes would have been a generous and very welcome addition. So with all of that in mind, is the Bacala really worth 1.5 million pounds plus taxes? Is it really special enough to warrant that price? Well, if you're trying to calculate the value based only on the sum of its parts, then it's surely not worth much more than the standard Continental. But if you view this car as a piece of art, as something rare and collectible, like a priceless painting, NFT, or even a Pokemon card, then its value is more simple to assess. It's worth whatever people are willing to pay for it. And quite clearly, people are willing to go out and buy it because like I said earlier, every single one of these Bacalars has already been sold. Would I buy one? Well, it is great fun, but honestly, I'd probably spend the money on buying about three Continental GT Speeds and then spend the change on a small village in Wales. But that's just me. Maybe I'm just too sensible. Or maybe I don't have a million and a half quid plus VAT to spare. I will say this though, to those people who are in a position to buy a Bacala, I beg you, go out and drive the thing. Don't just park it up and leave it to collect dust and value. Because these things are absolutely mega. 